You're listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast with your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is episode number 14. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to episode number 14 on the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and this podcast is designed to inspire, empower, and support you on the journey of uncovering your truth and purpose in the world. Today, I am so excited, as always, to be introducing to you another incredible guest with a super inspiring story and message to share about how they discovered purpose and got to be doing the work they do in the world today. So today's guest is Julia Fisher. Julia is a nutrition coach qualified with integrative nutrition and soon to be personal trainer, helping her clients to ditch the diets and find a healthier, happier and more sustainable approach to food, body image and wellness. And she also just so happens to be one of the amazing friends I've made since moving to London. I just wanted to share with you a little snippet from her website because I really love what it says here. So Julia writes, happiness is an inside job, they say. Same goes for your health and well-being. You can eat the most perfect diet and train all day, but if you are not at peace with yourself and life situation, even the most nutritious foods and sweat won't do a proper job. Can I get an amen? (laughs) Julia and I first met at a London meetup with Jess Lively. We instantly hit it off as we began discussing our respective journeys to discovering purpose and passion, and I was touched by Julia's obvious thirst, spark, and love for nutrition and all things wellness, self-improvement, and health. Because, guys, inspiration is contagious. Since that beautiful meeting, we have continued to meet up regularly along with a number of other friends we've made through the Jess Lively community. And so it's a really special honor to have been able to share this space with Julia today to discuss more about her personal journey to doing the work she does in the world today. So before moving to London and working in nutrition, Julia lived in Germany, where she was working and trained as a florist. Julia's personal journey is a really interesting one that I think will resonate with a lot of you listening in a different way to maybe some of the previous guests we have had on, because she really enjoyed floristry. She found it creatively inspiring and was a wonderful way for her to express that creativity. However, as you will learn during our conversation, her move into nutrition came into her life quite unexpectedly, and her passion was ignited in a way that gave her a mission, a purpose, and spark that she could never have expected. In this episode, we discuss how nutrition was one of the most unlikely fields Julia ever saw herself working in, how a breakup with a long-term partner caused Julia to go on a journey of self-development that catapulted her into the world of health and nutrition, how Julia thought she was living a great life, but it was only after going through something horrible at the time, so the breakup from a very serious relationship and some other issues she was then suffering from um, in relation to her health and body, that she was catapulted again onto this journey of health and wellness and personal development and ignited a spark within her that has led her to leaving a job she felt creatively inspired by to one that lights her up in a way that she could never have imagined. We also talk about change, trust, and the continual unfolding and expansion of your journey, life as an entrepreneur, dealing with the people around us who project their fear, Julia was also someone who suffered with binge eating disorder, so we discuss Julia's personal tips for anyone dealing with emotional or binge eating, which is something that is, we think, much more prevalent than what people might expect. And from that discussion, we also talk about other buffering behaviors, such as uh, over drinking, watching too much TV, retail therapy, gossip, you name it, which are all stopping you from experiencing what you're feeling. And guys, that means the good, the good and the bad. 
So you miss out on the bad, yes, but you also miss out on the good, which is what we get into in our discussion. We also talk about social media and comparison and the importance of having people around you who believe in you and also see your vision. Plus, Julia's advice for someone who has no idea what their special purpose or passion could be. This was such a fun episode to do with Julia, and I so appreciate just how much she shares throughout this episode. If you are someone who is dealing with social pressure when it comes to following your dreams or the path that is calling you, this episode is particularly perfect for you. So let me know what thoughts come up after listening to the episode, and let's dive in. Hi, Julia. Welcome to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really glad we finally get to do this. I was really excited for it. I know. I So let's start off with just if you could tell our wonderful listeners a little bit about who you are and what you are creating in the world today. Yes. So um, I'm a nutritional coach and soon to be personal trainer. Um, and I work with active people who are um, already interested in, you know, um, looking for okay, how can they improve their life and their health obviously with um, nutrition as well and then I guide my clients towards making food work for them having more energy throughout the day and um, yeah I'm really on a mission now to ditch the diet and fight the whole like calorie counting and diet industry and really build a healthy relationship with food and your body and um, take the stress out of food really and um, what to eat and how to eat. Um, yeah. So that's in a nutshell. <laughs> oh, that just, you just talking about ditching the diets and taking the stress out of food. That just makes me feel instant, like a sigh of relief. Because <laughs> ah. <laughs> that's not what we feel around those topics. Uh, I think for, uh, many people would agree with that. So Julia, tell us, was this always uh, what you were interested in or were you always working in nutrition like, as an adult? Uh, no, actually, I'm a trained florist, <laughs> <laughs> so completely off track. Um, I would have never, ever, ever, ever thought that I would somehow and sometime be, you know, um, you know, helping people towards a healthier life and with their food and now soon to be with their fitness um, because I myself never really had a healthy relationship with food um, or my body. And um, yeah, so I was, I had this like, I think, typical life almost like, you know, drinking a lot, eating a lot of crap or so-called healthy food, um, which was not really healthy if you consider McDonald's as a standard food. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, you know, just, you know, not really taking care of myself. So no, I never thought I would ever do something like that. Wow, that's so interesting. I didn't realize that you were a florist. Um, yeah, actually, just not a lot of people know that about me. But yeah, I've, I've worked in the field for four or five years, actually, and proper trained for three years with um, exams and everything. So, yeah. Wow, I love this. I'm always just learning. There's always a surprise in these conversations. <laughs> that's yeah. fantastic. And so actually, it's probably good for our listeners to know uh, a little bit about how we met and where you're located because um, they can probably tell you've got an accent and well, <laughs> so do I. I So Julia and I both met actually at a meetup, one of Jess Lively's meetup. Um, she has a podcast called The Lively Show and so we've been um, in contact ever since then and that was in London. But as uh, people probably know, I'm actually mm-hmm. from Sydney and Julia, where are you from? Um, I am from Germany originally. Um, I now try that my German accent is not becoming too strong because I don't really like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I'm originally from Germany, but now in the UK for almost three years now. So, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Three years. So we've both been in the UK for uh, about the same time. You're a few months but more than me. So that's so it's so nice that we've met at, um, when we're both, you know, in similar on similar journeys. So tell us, what was it like? So how did you move from being a florist into nutrition? Um, it's a, I always like to tell the story because I think it shows that you can you're never really stuck where you are and 
you know, you might not know right now where you will end up, but you will find your way. So um, I love being a florist. <clears throat> I have to mention that because most people change their, their job because they're not happy. Um, I loved working as a florist and I sometimes still miss it. Um, the creative aspect of it, like creating things and, you know, making people happy and, you know, dec get decorating weddings and hotels and also the sad side of it, like funerals and everything. However, I was not really fulfilled. So I was working really long hours and the pay was really, I think, under minimum almost. And um, yeah, around that time, I was also kind of um, really getting into becoming more aware of myself and my body. So it kind of started, I always thought I had a good life. I need to mention that as well. Um, however, I didn't because uh, we're so used, I think, to, you know, just living day in, day out and, you know, going to the job, whatever we're doing, and then coming home and then watching TV and maybe going out with friends. And that's basically it. Um, and for me, that was all fine. Like I had great friends and um, a great relationship at that time. Um, however, that relationship ended and I didn't took it too well. So I was falling into this big black hole. I think everyone who or um, struggled with a bad big breakup can relate. So yeah, it was a year of kind of falling into like depression and somehow of um, I was always struggling with the binge eating disorder, but to that time it then changed of not eating at all. So um, yeah, I was not really in a good place. Mm. Um, however, I somehow managed to turn my um, my depressed laying in bed all day, every day, not going really to work mood into um, finding fitness and uh, nutrition. So I started to kind of, yeah, really, not really educate myself, but um, experimenting with diets, um, diets in terms of eating healthier, which is really for me really I'm really happy about that because I was never really a fan of diet because I just loved food sometimes too much um so for me it was really at that point trying to figure out okay um how you know how can I use my or rebuild my energy and put my you know depression into something else so I started to become a vegan <laughs> as you do <laughs> Um, really just out of, you know, I just wanted to see, okay, what is it about and why is everyone raving so much about it and just see what's behind it. And then um, I also love to give myself challenges every now and then. So I said, okay, I tried for for a month or so. And then I really, I felt so good, like so good. I had so much energy and um, I was also struggling with insomnia and all this, you name it, I had it basically. So my sleep improved, my mood got better and I was just overall really happy um, and then obviously educated myself a little bit because if you go from a proper meat eater a loving Burger King and McDonald's to vegan <laughs> well what, what's there to eat <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah I started to educate myself a lot and really got into it and you know noticed the health benefits however I always felt like something else is missing so even though I was healthier and lost a lot of weight but became really healthy within my body still something was missing and that's when I kind of found a bit of self-development and did a lot of like inner work and um, journaling and you know working out and all these kind of things and then I wasn't quite happy with my job anymore because it was really just yeah it didn't fulfill me quite as much and I was really becoming passionate about nutrition and you know your body and and just how everything plays together and then a friend of mine actually recommended um, the the school I graduated from which is the Institute of Integrative Nutrition um, so I was looking into that and I was like okay why not wait I can just study and see you know use it for myself um, however I got so passionate about everything that I learned like 
how food, you know, not only food plays a role, but how self-love and body image plays a role with like when it comes to our well-being and all the different diets out there and how everyone is really different so that there's not really like one fits all approach. And yeah, I got really um, inspired by that. Um, and then saw others doing this as a job. So I thought, why not? <laughs> So I was a bit like radical and just quit my job from one day to the other almost and just dived right into building a business without knowing how to build a business. But I knew this is kind of my yeah, new calling and this is what I want to do and I want to help people because at that point, obviously, I was able to kind of heal myself properly. Um, I always like to say from food with food and really got, you know, a good relationship with myself um, and, you know, just really put the pieces together and became really passionate about helping others to achieve the same yeah I love that I love that you also um mentioned that you it it had been after a uh, a breakup that you had well you went into depression and had a lot of issues but it also uh, like kick-started this other beautiful journey that you went on yeah yeah because I think that's something that I also experienced the same thing after going through a breakup. Um, I was with someone for five years and it wasn't until, you know, that actually ended and it was really a heartbreaking time. And I was, yeah, it was very upsetting at the time, but it also got me to start trying a whole other like way of living, I guess, and really looking at my health and my, um, and what I wanted to do, like, with uh, fitness and also uh, I guess I was doing also a lot of self-development reading at that time and it was actually like such a great catalyst for change in my life as well so I just thought that was interesting that you also had a similar experience. Yeah and I think it's important because we always think you know obviously this relationship was like it was like a proper relationship like we were talking marriage and kids so it wasn't just oh you're together somehow and then it ends so it was mm -hmm. like something proper um and I think it's important for people to know that even if you experience something like this um you think your life is basically going to an end um and you don't know what to do anymore that a lot of great and even like things far from your imagination can come out of this situation. Like, I'm really grateful, obviously, for the time we've had, but I'm also more grateful now that it um, ended because otherwise I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing, changing lives and, you know, being inspired and inspiring and just living a completely different life, which is so much better than just, you know, yeah. Go work going to party and drinking and then that's basically it <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and actually I really love that you mentioned that you didn't uh you know you thought you were living a great life you know your day-to-day -day seemed pretty great but it wasn't until you now have a different you know perspective and life really that you realize that it really wasn't as great as it could have been and mm -hmm. I think uh, I think you make a really great point that a lot of people don't would actually probably think that well and actually I was like that too I thought this was you know fine I was really happy you know I spent a lot of time with friends and uh, going out and um, you know everything on the surface seemed to be quite great but if I hadn't had that you know deeper call for something else within I never would have like kick-started this whole other journey and now sitting with my vantage point today just like you with yours and looking back I just can't I, I just feel so grateful for everything that has happened to get me here today yeah um it's really yeah it's really important and interesting because like for me especially I always knew there's more to life like when I was um 20 I actually you know that I traveled to Australia which is still you know my favorite part in the entire world <laughs> um, <laughs> so and and back then when I came back to Europe and Germany and just going back into everyday life I kind of knew this is not it for me and there's more out there and I want more from life but then you know something happened that happens to like maybe almost every one of us you fall back into you know daily routine and you start a job 
um, and you start a relationship and obviously you have your friends and family and then you kind of dreams fade away a little bit like they are still there but they don't seem as reachable anymore at, as you thought they are um, which happened to me like it was always in the back of my head oh you know I never especially after I came back I, I knew I'm not living my entire life in Germany I want to go and explore the world and see and you know and but then obviously you have your day-to-day -day routine so you're like okay well then maybe later right <laughs> yeah it sort of just uh, distracts you with the day-to-day -day. yeah so I think it's important to have something to you know remind you that you know just do it and and get you know the, the timing's never right for mm -hmm. nothing so um yeah don't don't think you know you have to kind of live society's life and go to school and get a job and get married and kids and build a house and then basically die um <laughs> you know if, if there's something within you you figure it out and there's always a way and I think for me that is like the most impor important lesson that I've learned that even now I never thought I'm going to be training as a personal trainer <laughs> yeah you know? I love fitness, but then I thought um, because I love yoga as well. So, and I was always more the gr like more grounded person. Um, so I thought I'm becoming a yoga teacher eventually, and I eventually will. But now that I start with fitness first, I would never ever thought that. So yeah, don't you know, everything is possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think that's also uh, really also another good point that you know it just when you find something that really lights you up and you're really passionate about, like for you with nutrition and helping people live, you know, happier, healthier lives, that it doesn't end there. That's not, I think some people might think, you know, oh, I, once I find my purpose and that's it, that's it, I'm locked into that forever. But no, we, we keep growing and evolving and we have new desires. And the point is to keep acting on those. And as you keep pivoting and, and following these um, this inspiration and taking this inspired action, then it keeps molding, you know, like the journey is always unfolding. Yeah. And I think what I want to throw in there is, you know, planning is great mm. and making, you know, dreaming and all these kind of things that we do, like, you know, oh, how does your life look in five years? I love this question and now I hate it because I know so much can change within just a year. So make your plans, but prepare them to be flexible. Um, I think that's very important to always like obviously have your direction, but be flexible within your direction and, you know, see what kind of opportunities come your way and, you know, things might change and shift and you never know. So, yeah, I think it's very important to have a flexible plan. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I think also if you, we really limit ourselves if we uh, concentrate on how we're going to get something because we don't know what opportunity will present itself mm -hmm. to us and we limit ourselves if we, because our, what we come up with in our plan is just based on what either what we see other people doing or what we know from past experience and there are so many other options available so we have to like widen the lens by not concentrating on how we do something yeah exactly and um you know it's so important because especially when you you know start something like we crazy people do like start your own business and you know quit your job and travel the world and live like on the other side of the world and things it's like <laughs> you change so much it's ridiculous um like for the better like it's nothing negative to change like when i go home sometimes like people are like they don't even like recognize me anymore because i've changed so much which is great <laughs> um so because you change so much you evolve so much and that means you're becoming more open-minded and and all these things so um you know i see things differently now than i've seen them like even like two months ago mm. so you constantly grow within yourself which is so great so it's always important to be open and you know like like we said like be flexible and you know just trust your trust the process um yeah, just trust it. Yeah, definitely. Trusting the process. That's a really important uh, 
point and also I think one of the hardest for people. Oh, yes. Oh, God, yeah. It's, it's kind of difficult when we're asking um, someone to, you know, just trust in something where they can't see where it's going and that's what happens with, you know, these th- being inspired to do something. It's really just, okay, uh, well, this is what I can do now and then, you know, if you don't commit to a plan of where it's going to go and it doesn't follow that plan, think people, well, we just, we start to feel um, insecure and our ego starts to go a little crazy because it's, you know, there to tell us when um, we could be, you know, uh, in danger and it hasn't evolved to the present day to know what, you know, a real threat is. So it just sees any form of, uncertainty as dangerous and also anything that could be different from the status quo because uh, the we you know in um back in the day had to belong to our tribe otherwise we would be killed most likely we wouldn't survive so we're still operating on this old um paradigm which is so sad, like, I really, I get depressed because uh, there's so much more to life. It's life is so beautiful. And I was just speaking to someone else um, a couple of weeks ago. um, And actually yesterday as well. And it's like, I love to say it because life is supposed to be fun. And, you know, anything that you want to achieve and anything that you want it to be. And it's not just, you know, working your nine to five, you know, planning for a family, obviously that's great I want a family eventually but I also want a life and I don't want to you know live my life on other people's terms and I just you know when I die I want to know that I live the best life I could ever have lived Mm. Um, and sometimes obviously you know it comes with you know facing your fears and just you know, committing and then you just figure it out. Like, I'm like the best person to do that. I'm just like, I don't know, sounds good. Okay, let's do it. And then we figure out why we're doing it. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Which is not always good, but you know, you know. <laughs> I think it's a good approach, actually. I mean, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of things that I just do and I don't think about <laughs> like the reality of what I'm doing because then I know I'll probably just freak out. And um, also, but it's, it's really nice because like not second guessing that inspiration and just going like doing whatever it's you're inspired to do. And then that also doesn't limit you when you turn up to whatever this like experience is because you haven't got like preconceptions about what the outcome is going to be from that experience, which I think is really important. And I think that makes the experience so much better and so much bigger because if you detach yourself from the outcome, you kind of know where you're going. But if you're just constantly chasing this one little thing and you're not, you know, um, you're not celebrating and, and, you know, living the experience itself, what's then it's like the same with health like or like you know weight loss okay you come to me and you say okay I want to lose like what 10 pounds let's say great but why and what happens Mm. while you're losing those pounds and getting healthier and and you know you know accepting your body and all these things it's like this is your goal which is great that you have a goal but getting clear on on being okay what happens in between and being okay with embracing every moment to the fullest and even the down times because they make us even stronger afterwards and just enjoying the process um because that's really what matters it's not the goal that you will reach losing those 10 pounds or Mm. making this kind of money or whatever it is that your goal is but it's really the journey that brings you from where you are now to where you want to be I think that's even more important. Yeah, I I absolutely agree. And also because if we focus on what the outcomes are that we that we want, we don't actually know how we're going to feel when we get there. So if we expect something to give us a certain feeling and then we've spent all this time trying to get there and actually not enjoying the day-to-day and the process in doing that, how horribly disappointing is that? So you're basically chasing something your whole life that you're not actually getting the fulfillment because you're not looking at the present moment and what gives you the fulfillment like today. 
Yes, there's this quote. I don't know. You know, I'm like the the most biggest fan of quotes, but there's this quote. <laughs> <laughs> I love a quote as well. Uh, <laughs> let me say it, say it. I can't wait. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I was going to say, shall we risk to say it together? But no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the quote says, uh, "Life it what hap." Oh God, I can't even talk. Life it was happen is what happens while you're busy making other plans. Mm. And this is so true. Like, um. You know, when I, st when I started my business, I started my business when I was back in Germany, right? And um, for those of you who have German friends or kind of know a bit of our culture, we like proper planners and we need everything <laughs> black and white and just, you know, very structured. I think that's why I left because I'm not nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was speaking to this like guy from like the government and he was like, okay, where's your business plan then? And I kind of, brainstormed on a piece of paper my business plan because that's what you do <laughs> and then he was like okay but where exactly are you in like three to five years with your exact income and your exact like everything exact and I'm like I don't know and I don't want to know because how how am I supposed to know it's not that I'm like opening up a shop where I can say okay I have like xyz product sales each day I'm like serving people I'm helping people and if that's like two each month or ten I don't know if that happens but um <laughs> for me that was really like just imagine I would have put down that is like three years ago right yeah <laughs> so if I would have put down three years ago exactly where I you know, saw my business to be, I wouldn't, I would not be set here and I wouldn't be, you know, training to be a personal trainer and I wouldn't have evolved like all these like relationships and experiences and everything because I would have been so focused on, okay, in three years, I need to have like X amount of income and, and net worth and this and all these kind mm -hmm. of other business crap that you need. It's not crap, but you know, you get yeah, the point. <laughs> I do. Yeah. And then you and then you're so focused on achieving whatever that is that, you know, you might have other opportunities that come up and you might think, Oh well, I won't take them because that's not gonna get me to this plan that I created, you know, however long ago it was. Yeah. 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 I think the I think like I I love I love to uh like plan I love a to-do list, but I also love to like not follow them. So yeah. <laughs> my thing I'm is... the best list maker ever and then just put them in the corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the same with the business plan. Like I really feel, and I'm just thinking about this on the spot actually, but with planning, I think it's it's good to help you get clarity on where you might want to go, like where you think you're going to go today, but then you can't hold yourself to the plan. You have to like, you know completely detach once you've made the plan yeah and for me it just doesn't work I now do one two three month plans ish yep. <laughs> so every three months I sit down and just kind of roughly say okay in three months I want to achieve this and um you know I want to create this program <clears throat> and you know evolve in x direction and then but I'm not sticking to it if another opportunity, you know, comes my way. Like that's why now then oh, at least I, I try. Okay. I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> I try to every month then go and, and, you know, um, see, okay, last month, what did I do? What brought me closer to where I want to be like now, two months from now? And how, how does it now fit in with why I am and, and all these kind of things. And then basically you evolve from there. And this is just working so much better for me because it's not freaking me out that I, you know, it's only three months and not mm. three years. And I don't know, maybe I'm married in three years. Maybe I'm not, maybe I live on a desert Island. Who knows? <laughs> so Who knows? You're open and that's <laughs> yeah. what's most important. Yeah. Uh, something else I wanted to um, ask you, I think it's, it was really interesting that you said that you also loved working as a florist um, because I think a lot of people who might be thinking about, okay, I really want to discover my purpose um, are coming from a position where they know that they don't 
love what they're doing. And, um, but I think it's interesting because you mentioned that then you had, you know, the, you, you sort of, you had a mission through nutrition. So there was something you were trying to help and serve other people with, and that was maybe, you know, bigger than yourself. And so that's really interesting to see how your like passion was ignited by that, you know, purpose really. Um, and how that was different to, um, your work as a florist, which you do, you still enjoyed, but. Um, I don't know, was it that you didn't have that, um, you know, that driving mission behind it? No, I completely lost my passion, like totally. Um, For for, for, for being a florist? Yes. Oh, Um, okay. So not for, so here's here's a problem that I had, right? I love the job. It's like the the profession. I love the profession and I still love it. and I still, you know, now I'm still getting creative at home, you know, for my mom on Christmas or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, I still love to, I was never a person who could just like sit in front of the computer nine to five and just do computer work. I, I need to move and I need to get my hands dirty and just do things, right? So that's what I love the most about it. And as I mentioned before, like just getting creative and do like weird things. Um, so I loved... I was I really loved this. However, I didn't love to <laughs> pleasing people anymore. Mm. <laughs> and that's like really it's really random, but um it's as as much as I really enjoyed the job, it was not a job where I could reach my full potential because um in today's society obviously everyone needs to save money kind of um and the first you know, place where you save is flowers Mm -hmm. and decoration, all these kind of things, right? So you had a drastic, like, decrease in income from, like, um, you know, funerals and and just, you know, weddings as well. So it was, like, always a constant, not fight, but, you know, it was hard. And um, also, I also did, like, competitions. Like, most people don't know that, but there are actually Mm -hmm. competitions out there. Wow. So I really loved it and just get creative. Um, however, I was, I felt stuck, I think. That's the most important thing because I couldn't go and I love to, I love studying. I never liked school, but I always liked studying. Yes. Um, I think that that's why I'm now, you know, kind of evolving furthermore into like, um, you know, training and then eventually yoga and all these kind of things because I just, I'm just really interested in the human body and everything. Um, but with, being a florist it wasn't really you couldn't really put it into action so even though I would have you know gone to seminars and you know those like workshops and all these kind of things um, exhibitions you saw great things but it was never possible to put it into daily practice because that's not what people want they just want a nice bouquet or my Mm. rose that's that's basically it and even you know with um you know big we had like big hotel kind of decorations and weddings and even those kind of you know places they said oh we just want you know something normal and um so that's where I kind of lost my passion because if I can't evolve in my current um where, where I'm currently at and then thinking okay, I have to do that for, you know, what, rest of my life? Um, and w- with, like, at the beginning of 20, it's like, mm. <laughs> yeah, I need to feed my brain somehow. So, um, yeah, that's why I kind of, you know, with where I work in now, like nutrition and health, it's just, like, it's such a fast-paced industry. Like, if you think about it, every other week there's a new diet out there, a new study mm-hmm. and research and it's just so interesting and I'm just really inspired by it because you think you know everything but then you really don't. <laughs> yeah, totally. And actually so then we you mentioned that um you ha- didn't have a like healthy relationship with food necessarily uh bef- when you before you moved into nutrition. So did you and um so it was emotional eating one of the things that you sort of experienced? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I struggled with emotional eating and then also binge eating disorder. Okay. All right. And so did you, um, 
I'm just wondering if there's any, if we've got any listeners who are suffering from uh, emotional eating or maybe binge eating, if you have like any advice. It's, it's a quite, um, it's not that there's like one thing I can say, okay, do this and you'll be fine because, mm. um, when it comes to eating disorders, no matter what kind of eating disorder it is, um, it's a bit more complex. But I think awareness is the first, you know, first step. Because if you struggle with, like, let's say, bulimia or anorexia, it's a bit more um, obvious. Whereas binge eating is something that's just becoming to the awareness. Um, awareness of people mm. um, and uh, so many people struggling and suffering from it yep. and no one really knows because it's really um, kind of normal these days to overread and just you yeah. know put your pain and and heartbreak into food and just stuff yourself with ice cream at 10 p.m in front of Netflix and I'm saying <laughs> yeah. you should never do this but you know there's always a way to do it um so uh, for me, what really helped was being okay with my feelings. Um, and that that's the hardest part that we ever have to do in life, I think, is being okay with our feelings and actually getting to know what's going on. Um, because <laughs> I thought I was heartbroken when my ex-boyfriend left me, but then when I got to the root cause of my, you know, feelings and emotions, that was even more heartbreaking and, you know, unrevealing everything that's going on and why I'm acting the way I'm acting and why I'm putting my, you know, my pain into food and the way I treat myself and others and, and all these kind of things. Um, so it's a really, it's a hard thing. It but is. yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's the most important thing you can ever do for yourself and your life and you should not do it alone and I really wish I had someone back then to you know just take my hand and say it's going to be right mm -hmm. and if you need to say to say to you you know it's going to be right I really mean it um you will get through it and yeah there, there's always someone there mm -hmm. to you know even just listen and if it's your journal who's the only thing or person that listens that's fine that that's what it was for me and it still sometimes is. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask because I think, especially for women, um, binge eating or emotional eating is something that many of us suffer from. And um, it's I, I that advice that you gave about um, figuring out what you're actually feeling and getting to know what's going on, I, th I think that's fantastic that I've – uh, also being an emotional eater, uh, from like going, I don't know, for my whole adult life, probably also as a teenager. And, uh, I would, I felt like I was trying to stuff down my feelings and something that's really helped me, uh, has been to, when I feel the urge to eat, to really, I like to journal and ask like, what's going, like, what's going on. And if after I journal, I still want to eat then I will. But nine times out of 10, just by journaling and actually uh, getting to what the root of it is, I don't actually feel like eating after that. And um, yeah, so it's been really helpful. And I think it is because, yeah, it, it's uh, a way to sort of hide from your feelings. It is. And it's like another thing I would say is just breathe. Like, you know, if you got your comfort food, let's say, cookies for me it was cookies <laughs> let's or your ice cream whatever it is or your third plate of pasta right it doesn't matter what it is um when you get that in front of you and you feel a bit off just stop for a moment breathe and kind of you know deep like breathe properly like with awareness we breathe automatically but we never really breathe with awareness so um breathe in and out really deeply and ask okay do I really need this or is this just you know comforting me and why are we speaking of it it's not just it's not just food it's like so many other things we kind of suppress our feelings with like 
for me obviously it was food but then before that it was like drinking and mm. that like alcohol it is for so many people as well and you know if you have to have a bottle of wine every night then that's not healthy anymore I love wine like you know it's like when we get together our girls I do love to have a wine but that's different from having it every day um very regularly especially when you're alone um or you know just hanging out with the wrong people um mm. sex as well so really think of kind of what it is for you that you put your pain into and then you know think if there may be a healthier alternative yeah exactly and there's also things like you know when you um uh, watch so, like a lot of TV or Netflix, mm. <laughs> the new mm -hmm. thing, and um, or if you are maybe you know spending a lot of money on retail therapy, and um, <laughs> or you know gossiping that can also give you the same sort of um, make you feel you know good in the moment, and um, but it doesn't get it just stops you from feeling your feelings as you said, and I think it's so interesting because all I call refer to these as buffers, which is a term that I her, uh, that Brooke Castillo uh, who's a life coach uses and I just love and um, I feel like when you've got all these issues like the emotional eating the over drinking um, you know all of uh, the retail therapy all of this where you're it's not that you can't ever do it it's just when you're doing it a lot and often and it's stopping you from feeling your feelings that um, that they're the sorts of things that stop you from feeling the call for something to do something else or to be inspired or to receive like you know creativity um, and inspiration so I think you know once you sort of uh, deal with those issues then you start to see you know what options there are out there for you oh definitely like with my clients right I would never ever tell you I'm not one of those crazy nutritionists so tell you you cannot have chocolate cake ever in, again in your life I love chocolate cake <laughs> like that raw cake that you had the other week oh my god <laughs> it was great <laughs> um, so <good. laughs> um, you know it's about being mindful about it right and be have like a balanced and healthy relationship with it and you know if you know, if it's your grandma's birthday and you have a, two pieces of cake, that's absolutely fine. Go for it. But if you're sitting alone on your sofa eating the whole cake, then something's off. And I say that with really tough love. But um, mm. there's, there's, you know, as I said, I always like to say there's like a way of doing it and another way of doing it. So I, I'm a huge fan of, you know, and and on a mission. I, I think mission is my new word. Yeah, I love <laughs> to, mission. You know, it, is, <laughs> it is a mission. <laughs> to, you know, just, you know, teach my clients, okay, you can have, you know, bad food, whatever. Um, it's not really bad. It's just food, right? Um, and you can enjoy it and you are allowed to enjoy it. But, you know, do it mindfully and know that you're doing it and when you're doing it embrace it fully and love that you do it and don't feel ashamed or guilty afterwards mm. um, because that's when the difference comes yeah. and also sometimes the best feeling you get is after a good cry and I don't mean crying like a girl I mean <laughs> you know ugly crying and loud and you know not able to breathe anymore um for like a good half hour or so and but afterwards I don't know take a long shower or you know hot bath something go for a walk um that is just the best feeling sometimes and then you know sometimes that's just all we need as well it's just like a good cry exactly it's like when you're a, a baby or a kid you know you just express whatever emotion it is like none of them are necessarily you know the way that we look at them now which is like this is good and this is bad this is like acceptable and this isn't and crying is one that you know an anger as well that um we a lot of us su suppress and then it manifests in other ways but if you just release it and fully experience it at the time it passes hmm. and i think you know especially as women we live in a time where we need to be so strong. We don't need to be so strong. You know, it's okay to, you know, show your 
don't be so flawless and don't be so strong. And I'm, you know, I'm still working on that as well because obviously I come a long way, but I'm still dealing with stuff and we all will always do. But um, it's just, you know, knowing how to handle it. And I used to be ashamed of, you know, crying. I mean, no one really likes to cry in public, but we are all human beings and we're not robots. And mm -hmm. especially if you live in London, no one will realize anyway because everyone's just busy minding their own business. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we don't really need to be so strong always. And it's okay to, you know, ask for help. And, you know, sometimes you don't even have to talk. Sometimes it's just nice to having someone sitting next to you or on the phone, just knowing someone's there. Um And just, yeah, just be, be okay with not being, you know, the tough, strong woman that everyone expects you to be. Mm, that's because... so beautiful. Thank you for that. <laughs> that's really nice. I think it's that's really important. <laughs> it is. That's re that is really important because we're, I think we just put on such a brave face all the time yeah. and there's just so much beauty to be had by, um, you know, actually being vulnerable and mm -hmm. you know and and being supported as well when we need it it's okay to ask for help yeah and like you said in the beginning with uh social media it's a blessing but then it's not is it yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you look at people's life and profiles and whatnot and everyone's so lean and perfect and flawless oh my god you do not want to know what's going on behind the scenes trust me yeah. um so don't get carried away scrolling through instagram And, uh, you know, thinking everyone's so perfect, but you, they are not, they have their own shit to deal with. I'm sorry for my French, but, yeah. um, you know, don't, don't think that these people have their life together because no one really has. So, you know, you don't either. So it's completely fine. And I think it's really important, especially in kind of my industry, when it comes to health and fitness, everyone's just so fit and lean and all these apps and six packs and oh my god and I'm sometimes getting depressed so I need to just put my phone away and like I'm completely fine with my body yeah. and where I am now <laughs> but um yeah it's important to not get too much into the vortex of Instagram and Facebook and comparing yourself to other people's um profile absolutely Yep, absolutely. And so I was also interested, um, what were your, uh, because you were still in Germany when you like uh, moved into nutrition and um, di like what did your, how did you deal with like your family and friends and their reaction <laughs> to that move? <laughs> um, well, we're still dealing with that one. <laughs> um, I just, oh. So I was always the black sheep in my family, right? I was always, you know, my cousins, they went to school and now they're doing, you know, university and all these kind of things and will have a proper job. And I'm just like here quitting my job, starting my business, leaving the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, it's a difficult situation. <laughs> um, It is. But yeah, my, my parents were always very supportive no matter what I was doing, as long as I'm fine and have like a roof over my head kind of thing. Um, and, you know, actually when I was home over Christmas last year, um, I actually had a really nice chat with my dad and I never thought that actually, obviously they support what I'm doing because, well, I'm their daughter, but um, I never thought that they are actually, you know, happy about it mm -hmm. because it's not what you do right and they still don't understand what it actually is that I'm doing but <laughs> <yeah>. anyway <laughs> um and he actually said you know as long as you are happy we don't really care what you do because we want you to be happy and I think that's really important Aww. and it took like it took us almost four years to get to that point but wow. um yeah it was difficult in the beginning um also for my like friends back then especially because I was the only one like in Germany that's not what you do you don't quit your job and start your business you just mm. I don't know we, we're just not like that um so yeah I was the only one in my kind of close friend circle who you know almost um all of a sudden didn't have a safe quote safe job anymore um but then when I moved countries everyone's like oh you know what actually I was always dreaming of xyz and I was like 
just do it. But then they were, they felt so stuck and it just like showed me again, you know, actually I don't just need to do that for myself, but also to show them, you know, you can, you know, reach your dreams and do whatever you want with your life. And then it's so important to do something that that fulfills you and be happy. And obviously in the beginning it was really hard for me because no one really believed in me and, mm. you know, didn't quite know and understand what I was doing. And all of a sudden, you know, you're the same probably. You work from home a lot. Mm -hmm. So everyone just assumes you have time because yeah. you're home. <laughs> Okay, listen, people, just because we're home workers doesn't mean we're just sitting on the sofa watching Netflix all day. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. And because, they, you know, I was cancelling on things because, you know, I needed to figure out how to build a business because that's not something that you learn in life. Mm -hmm. um, so I cancelled on stuff and they were always like, oh, but you're just home. I was like, no, I'm actually working. <laughs> I know that's so it's so fascinating how people think that I I had the exact same thing and I mean this is in London not Germany and <laughs> <laughs> it's like you know when you first start something you're doing even more because oh God, you've yeah. got you've got to figure everything out <laughs> so if anything you're more busy than you probably yeah, yeah. were before <laughs> not that I like to I ne I don't like being busy at all but it definitely is you know an investment in time <laughs> mm -hmm. I worked so many hours you have no idea I didn't sleep at all and then it's actually a really interesting point, right? Because I was building a health business, teaching people how to be healthy. Mm. Uh, and I was becoming so unhealthy. And my insomnia got back. And I was just sleep deprived because I was constantly working. And then at some point, I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's not really leading by example. So yeah. I knew something had to change. But um, yeah, it's like trying and figuring it out. And no one really gets you. And you know, it's okay. You can still love them. It's just, you know, I think it's important to find and connect with people who are on the same path as you and with the, you know, same mindset and who really get you. I think that was really important for me to not give up is actually having people around me who say, oh, my God, your work is so important and you can absolutely do it because you're, like, really good at what you're doing. Um, and I was like, but I don't know how to run a business. And I was, okay, let's just figure that out. But, um, yeah. It's important to, you know, friends and family, but then also find friends who kind of get you because yeah. it's yeah. not what you do. Yeah. I think that's, that's so right. And, and the thing is with, the, with your friends and family, I mean, they're only coming from um, the best place possible. You know, they just care for you and they, you don't want, they're just trying, they're doing what they think is best for you. And uh, so that's, that's lovely, but you as the person have to figure out what's best for you and nobody knows that except for you. So uh, it's really nice when you do get uh, people who are like doing uh, maybe in the field that you want to work in. If you start getting people who are a couple of he steps ahead of you, because then it shows you what is possible. And also, you know, environment is stronger than willpower. And it, <laughs> it has a massive, it makes a massive difference. And definitely. And, you know, for me, it was also kind of, I need to prove it to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I kind of, the problem was also because I kind of, you know, started a few things in my life and then never kind of followed through. But with this, I knew this is, I, I don't know what I would do with my life if I wouldn't do this because I don't see myself going anywhere else soon. Um, so for me, it was like, I need to prove it to them. Whereas now I'm like, this is just ridiculous. I don't need to prove anything to no one. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But yeah, it was also like, you don't believe in me, you watch me. <laughs> I know. Oh, totally. Yeah. Proving yourself. That's a, that's a whole other topic, which can go, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, the motivation behind it is just not, uh, coming from a, a good place. And that's how you end up doing things that, you know, aren't really in alignment with, um, what you're, um, really being called to do. So yeah. yes, I've done that too, as well, many times in my life and <laughs> <laughs> love to catch myself when I'm doing that. So, uh, Julia, I wanted to ask with, um, you've given us so many, so much advice to someone who, um, you know, might be 
wanting to figure out, you know, how they make a move or um, what, you know, how to find fulfilling work. But is there anything else that you might, any advice you'd give to someone who is feeling that call to do something more fulfilling in terms of their work? I just do it. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's easier said than done, but you know, just do it. And you don't have to be as drastic as I was and just quit your job from one day or the other and then just do it. You can, you know, maybe reduce your hours or something or, um, you know, like small steps each day. And um, so what I like to do also with my clients sometimes is do like a joy list. Oh, I um, love that. <laughs> so because we're so caught up in like our everyday life that we sometimes forget things that brings that, that bring us joy. So, you know, if you're kind of feeling stuck and you know, okay, I, I'm in this position right now, but actually I'm not really happy and I know there's something, I'm just, I'm not sure what it is now, or maybe you do, um, you know, write everything down that, you know, makes you happy and brings you joy and then start doing these things every day. And if it's like dancing around naked with your dog, then do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I think the problem we have is that people will judge us and that we will fail. Um, so you will never fail. The only way you will fail is if you never try. Um, so the worst thing that can happen is you, you don't make it and you can then still say, you know, I've tried. Because for me, that was like the like worst thing that can happen to me is like being on my deathbed and say, oh, if only. Mm. So I didn't want this to happen. So even if I kind of would have failed in the business at least I tried and I think it's really important to remind us of that and then you know also don't really don't care what people say or think because whenever they might judge you or say something just remember it's always a reflection of them and where they are at in their life Um, and that sometimes it's just being you know jealous of you being brave enough so um, yeah don't care just do it Yeah, actually, I can say for all the people who um, were really scared when um, I changed careers as well, or and even before I did and was talking about how I wanted to do something different, um, I, you know, most of those people now today are so proud of me and what I've achieved. Mm -hmm. So it all just comes from, it's all, they're only looking out for your best interest, but you can't listen to them because they're coming from a place of fear. Yeah, and it's like, <clears throat> it's something that um, we're just not used to it. Like, we are growing up knowing, okay, we go to school and then we go maybe to college or we don't, and then we have a job. That's all we know, but there's so much more, and that's it's a bit just shifting. And maybe, you know, be the example of someone who's not following society and building someone else's dream instead going and build your own dream. Um, and then... People, you know, for me, when I started to start to eat healthier, which is so ridiculous, everyone's like, oh, are you sure? Are you getting enough nutrients? I'm like, wait. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Before that, I was drinking and eating crap. But yeah, be yeah, you be mindful of my nutrients. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's the same with, you know, building a business or changing careers or whatever. People, we only know what we know. So it's like, just stick to it and kind of, you know, listen to them. But then like forget about what they're saying and just <laughs> yep. do it and then show them and then they will be like you know so proud and see and maybe even you inspire them to do what whatever they that is they want to do yeah exactly you give them permission to chase their dreams then as well oh that's so beautiful and so i've got just two more questions but they're only quick ones uh, so the first is just do you have any like daily rituals or um something that you do you know on a regular basis that um, you want to share oh this is my favorite question (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) so it kind of always changes but at the moment so I have my little morning routine which is um, and I don't care if I need to get up at 4 30 in the morning but I'm just I'm yeah the day is just so much better when I do it so Mm -hmm. I get up in the morning and then I straight go on, like, lay lay back down on a yoga mat. Yep. <laughs> um, which I think it's quite motivating because you think, oh, now, now I need to get up and then, uh, but actually, if you think I'm getting up just to lay down again, 
it's kind of easier. <laughs> yep, I agree. That's what worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of motivation. Um, and then I just, you know, kind of breathe a little bit and do a bit of stretching, like depending on how much time I've got in the morning. Um, maybe like this morning, I'd, I've done a proper 30 minute yoga, morning yoga practice. And then I have some, you know, tea or coffee. And then, um, so I always start my day with movement. If I have more time, I go and work out. If I don't, then it's just a bit of stretching. Um, so even if it's just five minutes and then I do a bit of, you know, meditation. And then I always listen to, um, so either an audio book, um, or like a podcast episode or if I really need motivation in my day, I just turn on the music and dance around the house to wake me up and um, while brushing teeth and everything. So that's really important to me. And then throughout the day, what I found, it's like, it's great to have a morning routine, <laughs> but then you, you can lose it so quickly throughout the day because you get caught up with things and all these kind of, you know, things that we need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I now take like breaks like every other hour or so just to, I don't know, stay out outside the window or do a meditation or breathe or kind of run up and down the stairs. Um, so really depending on the day. But I think it's so important because we start our day so mindful and then just it's all gone by midday and lunch. So, um, yeah. And then I now try to kind of get into the habit of a night bedtime routine mm. I'm not quite <laughs> successful so I don't want to yeah yeah, say yeah. <laughs> I'm the same I, I love having an evening routine as well or I like to call it ritual but the that that will be the first thing to go if uh <laughs> if anything <Yeah. laughs> but that's why I make the morning non-negotiable and I know the bedtime is so important actually because yeah. your day is only as good as your night um but yeah, even if it's, you know, sometimes I do like to watch Netflix or something. And then sometimes I just stretch while, you know, do the evening stretch while, you know, looking, uh, watching Netflix series, whatever it is, yeah. um, and then crawl into bed. Um, so, yeah, but I'm still working on that. <laughs> <laughs> Work in progress. Yeah. Oh, awesome. There's some great ideas there. And so my last question for you is just what is in store for you for the rest of 2018 as far as you know today? <laughs> <laughs> it's really exciting. Um, <laughs> well, obviously, I'm not training to be a personal trainer. So exciting. So really looking forward to you know um kind of getting new programs together obviously in combination the nutrition with the personal training and just helping people on a more you know meaningful level and i'm not so i say it here just to keep myself accountable <laughs> <laughs> i'm not becoming one of those crazy personal trainer who you know lets you do <laughs> like crazy fancy things if you don't like it i want to be fitness to be enjoyable and kind of be, not like I do now with the nutrition yeah. I meet where you are and then we just figure it out yep. but obviously I'm, I'm professional so we're not just figuring out but I hope you get the point <laughs> yeah definitely well it's it's the you know ditching the diets is it's the same sort yeah. of concept yeah. yeah um so yeah I'm really excited for this to happen and then um obviously I'm doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one work but um I do want to maybe see um about like group programs um in, in the near future as well as um, planning my first retreat so that was always a dream for me since they want to you know have like maybe a week or weekend retreat somewhere nice so um yeah it's going to be big <laughs> that sounds so exciting I can't wait to see how it all unfolds for you oh yeah I can't wait to see where you are heading it's like <laughs> Oh, great. I'm so happy we like met and on this journey together and just, yeah, it's so nice. <laughs> I know. It's so fantastic. And well, Julia, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on and also sharing, you know, so openly about your journey for all of us. I know that there will be a lot of people who resonate with all of the things you've said. And honestly, there's just so much great advice throughout this. So really like from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for coming on.
Oh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I love talking to you. It's always so nice. So there it is, my friends. What a wonderful conversation we had together. Thank you, Julia, so much for coming on the podcast. I know that this conversation will inspire so many of you beautiful people listening. And I also love one of the last things Julia mentioned there, which is to be the example in society of not building someone else's dream, but building your dream. I think this is so powerful. And it's something we've spoken about before on this podcast. As we grow up and learn to be great, attentive little children, we also learn to stop listening to ourselves and to start seeking the approval of everyone around us. This takes us further away from our desires. And before we know it, we really are living the dream of someone else, whether that be our parents, our teachers, our friends, you name it. It's just not your dream. And I also think Julia's point that she made about not knowing what you don't know. So you might think the life you are leading now is everything is amazing, is as good as it gets. But without trying new things, new experiences, without exploration, adventure, challenging ourselves and putting ourselves outside of our comfort zone, you don't get to know whether there was anything better or even the knowledge that where you are right now is the place you're meant to be for now. Contrast, guys, is everything. So it's always important to have that. You can learn more about Julia and her work over at Julia Fisher, that's F I S C H E R dot co, and also connect with Julia on Instagram and Facebook at Julia Fisher Wellness. And you can also join Julia's private Facebook group called Thrive on Health. You can find the show notes for this episode over at www.letitiaringe forward slash Julia Fisher. Now, what's going on with me this week? I am still in Sydney, Australia, but this week I will be traveling to Port Macquarie to spend some time with family and then with then it will be my last weekend in Australia before I head to Auckland in New Zealand for the beautiful You Coaching Academy Inspiration Day and our graduation. I'm so, so excited to meet some of the wonderful people I've connected with through the Beautiful You Coaching Academy coaching course in person. Life coaches really are the most wonderful friends. One of my friends recently wrote an article, in fact, about this, Keely, and I couldn't help but agree. If you want people to encourage you, help push you and see your dreams and believe in you, get yourself some life coaching friends or, of course, book in a session with a life coach. It really is the most amazing experience. And to that end, if you want more, please make sure you sign up for my weekly newsletter over at www.letisharinj.com forward slash subscribe. This newsletter is designed to help you create a life that is beautiful in your eyes and is filled with tips and resources to help you create a life that you love, enjoy and are inspired by, as well as getting access to my 21 week program to help you do just that. You can also find out about working with me on a one-to-one basis on my website under the coaching page. I help my clients embrace their power, overcome self-limiting beliefs and behaviors, and create an incredible soul-driven life with purpose. If that sounds like something you are after, then please get in contact and let's have a chat about working together to support you in doing just that. Okay, I will be back next week with another inspiring conversation for you all. And in the meantime, as always, I ask if this podcast is providing you with any value, please make sure you leave a review on iTunes, share it with anyone you think might resonate and get in touch to let me know what you are loving. And in the meantime, come and hang out on Instagram at Create a Life That Is Beautiful or on Facebook at Letitia Ringe. I'm now doing an Instagram live after each episode to expand more on the concept raised in the episode from the week before. So watch out for that. Have a wonderful week, my friends, and see you next week for another episode to help you unlock your truth and purpose. 